On the 24th of July, 1969, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins came back to Earth after completing the Apollo 11 mission, where the first manned lunar landing had taken place. Once they had safely landed near Hawaii and were transported to Honolulu and put in quarantine facilities, one of the first things they did was go through US Customs. So do all astronauts actually have to go through customs upon landing back on Earth? Okay, obviously astronauts do have to go through customs when they want to fly somewhere, say the United States to Russia to Kazakhstan, especially since they generally take regular commercial flights when flying to the various training centers they'll have to visit. That's obvious, but what I'm sure we'd all actually like to know is if astronauts today still have to go through customs after landing. Like, did the passengers of the space shuttle have to go through the same post-landing procedures as the passengers of any international flight today? In all actuality, no. In fact, the Apollo 11 customs declaration was mostly treated as a kind of a joke. In reality, the customs papers weren't even filled out until a few weeks after landing, and were filled out in NASA headquarters in Washington, D.C. However, when the Apollo 11 astronauts filled out their customs forms, their flight was declared to have been a flight from Cape Canaveral, Florida to Honolulu, Hawaii, with a stopover on the moon. And honestly though, I thought my flight last summer from Washington, D.C. to Berlin via Istanbul was a bit inefficient. Imagine Florida to Honolulu via, like, the actual freaking moon! But yeah, basically what the astronauts made sure to do was declare who they were and the items they got from the duty-free store. To prevent space diseases, they also had to go through three weeks in a quarantine trailer in order to prevent any risk of backward contamination. Science term. Backward contamination. It's a science term. Which basically just means bringing back any potential microbes to the moon and wiping out life on Earth. Kind of like what happened here in the Americas, except infinitely worse. Thankfully, all that didn't happen, and the practice was disbanded after the next few Apollo missions also showed no evidence of moon flu. So what about today's astronauts? What's the deal with them? Well, astronauts coming in from the International Space Station, or China's Tiangong Station, don't have to go through customs, largely because ISS astronauts depart from and return to Kazakhstan, and Chinese astronauts, or Taikonauts, go to and from China. I mean, to be fair, those countries are pretty hard to miss if you know how to pilot a spacecraft well enough. So, since they aren't crossing from one country into another, they obviously don't have to go through customs. In fact, astronauts don't even take their passports with them into space, with their passports instead being held in safekeeping back on the ground. Remember, government property. Which does probably make it a bit harder to go through customs in the first place. Even during the days when American and Russian astronauts and cosmonauts did launch and land in different countries, there were never any required passport checks. The American contingency would just launch from Florida and dock to the ISS, and the Russian contingency would launch from Kazakhstan and dock to the exact same station, and the two groups would freely intermingle and return to the countries they launched from, all without any passport checks. It is perhaps important to remember that space missions are highly orchestrated government ventures, and the astronauts are there representing their countries. As well as some other sciencey stuff. Plus, it would have been pretty hard for, say, a Russian cosmonaut to try to illegally immigrate to the United States by hitching a ride down on the space shuttle. Whether or not there are any safeguards against that don't matter, because there kind of don't have to be. I mean, an astronaut illegally hitching a ride on the wrong vehicle would be easily spotted and would also likely make international news. This whole argument mainly stems from how everything not on Earth or in Earth's skies, or as I like to call it, Earthens, isn't part of any country, and is not allowed to be. The UN Outer Space Treaty explicitly forbids any country from claiming sovereignty over space, the moon, other planets, other non-planets, stars, black holes, parallel universes, the fifth dimension, etc. It's kind of like with the middle of the ocean, far beyond any country's exclusive economic zone, where no country is allowed to claim any territory. One likely similar case to this is the current case with Antarctica, which also kind of falls into this camp. Multiple countries claim parts of Antarctica, but they aren't recognized under international law as real borders. What makes this perhaps even more complicated are the research bases, which countries with Antarctic claims generally place within their claims, whereas many countries without their own claims just place wherever, because it's free for everyone, right? We may or may not see this happen in the future with extraterrestrial bases. After all, it's not like we're going to solve our problems by the time we land on Mars, but the spacecrafts themselves are a little bit different. Much like boats, spacecrafts are subject to the jurisdiction of the country they were registered in. Soyuz capsules are just as Russian as many cruise ships are supposedly Panamanian due to tax breaks. Wait, hang on a second. I know it! This means that, due to extraterritorial jurisdiction, Extraterritorial jurisdiction. Geopolitical term. It's a geopolitical term. I have no idea what I'm even doing with these, honestly. Ships traveling in space or international waters, or even planes flying outside any country, are automatically subject to the laws of the craft's country of registration. This goes for people as well. If you were to throw me out into Point Nemo, far away from any landmass, 
I would be really mad at you, but I would also be automatically subject to US laws, even if I were just in a different country, like, say, I don't know, the UK? To tie everything back together, obviously there are no border checks in space, nor are there for astronauts coming back home, despite having technically left the jurisdiction of their country of launch. In a way, it's sort of comparable to a boat leaving their country's territorial waters in exclusive economic zone, and then coming right back, except on a much more coordinated level. Of course, the amount of information one can actually find in this subject is minuscule at best, because it's not an issue that really needs to be thought of much in today's world, where only the best and the brightest really have much of a chance of going up in the first place. So TLDW, astronauts don't have to go through customs when coming back from space, since they're on closely monitored government missions, and passport control is mainly done in order to monitor the passage of people and goods, of which NASA, JAXA, the ESA, and Roscosmos already generally have a pretty good idea of. However, in the distant future, with interplanetary travel likely becoming as common as transoceanic travel is today, it all begs one simple question. Would a tourist traveling to a lunar base have to go through customs upon re-entry to Earth? Would it be like visiting any of the numerous Antarctic bases today? At this point, all we can really do is speculate. And support space travel to help us get there. Seriously, keep NASA funded. Thank you all as always for watching. Now, since I will be attending VEDCON London this coming week, the next two videos you will see posted on this channel will be the guest videos that I have promised earlier. There will actually be two videos, since I couldn't choose this one idea. So, be nice, be kind, and someone else will be seeing you next Sunday.